Welcome, my name is Jennifer Stevens and I'm the creative director here at MAPR Agency. MAPR is a full service communications firm in Northern Colorado with offices in Fort Collins, Boulder and Denver. We are also the proud sponsor for the PR and marketing track here at Fort Collins Startup Week. Our agency does work in areas of public relations, SEO, website design and development, digital marketing and so much more. Today we'll be talking about website accessibility and why it's important for you to include this into your strategy. Before we get started, let me share a little bit about me. Like I stated earlier, I'm the creative director here at MAPR. My role is to make sure that all our digital designs we create meet both our high standards of design as well as our clients' requirements for the project, whatever those may be. In terms of websites, we are a WordPress shop. We love creating websites that create good user experiences and are easy to use for our clients who maintain their sites after development has been completed. As far as accessibility goes, it's become quite a bit of a passion for me. You see, I grew up with two deaf parents and I know firsthand how frustrating having a disability can be. It doesn't take a lot to be accommodating to those with disabilities. It's simply just taking a little action and improving making improvements to help others. So let's get started. So why is accessibility important? Well, about 57 million Americans have some sort of disability. This includes impairments like colorblindness or poor vision, um, blindness, dyslexia, uh, aut autism, deafness or people who are hard of hearing, and even those with limb impairments. All of these impairments have some sort of effect on how people access your site. For example, your site's accent color might be red and perhaps you're using this color to highlight the links on your page. Well, those who are colorblind would not be able to see those links. People who are colorblind may not be able to distinguish the difference between the black text and the red links. So you can see it is important to make your site accommodating. Whether or not you have an impairment, these accessibility features can also offer a better user experience to anyone visiting your site. So today I'm gonna to ask you a few questions and provide you with a few resources that you can use to test your site and see if you're meeting some of these accessibility requirements. First question, are you able to navigate through your site using only your keyboard? There are many people out there that rely on keyboard navigation. They may have an impairment that doesn't allow them to properly use a mouse or a trackpad. So when you test your site, you should navigate through the content using only your keyboard. Then ask yourself a few of these questions. Can I easily see where the keyboard focus is? Keyboard focus clearly displays where a person is at on the page. This will help sighted keyboard users navigate to areas on the page that will allow them to click on links and buttons as they move through their site using the enter key. As you can see in the example I provided, I have used the keyboard to tab over to the about us link in the main navigation. Should I click enter, I would be taken to the about us page on the site. Does the keyboard tab order make sense? As you tab through the site, you should follow the flow of the page. For instance, as I tab through the example shown on the slide, the next few tabs would follow the main navigation. When the navigation is complete, I would move to the next link on the page. Can I easily access all functionality within the site using just the keyboard? This example shows the tabbed, shows tabbed content. I know that when I tab over using my keyboard to one of the title tabs and click enter, the content within the tab will appear. Are your links obvious and meaningful? If you have a visual impairment, it's more obvious to have your links underlined. Color should not be the only way you distinguish your links. If you're using a screen reader, your links should also be meaningful. Avoid using a lot of the read mores and click here's. As you can see, the image on the left shows the links in a teal accent color. If you are colorblind, you may not be able to distinguish these links. 
if you were using a screen reader, the links on the left would only state click here. This has no meaning to a screen reader. When it reads off a list of the links on the page, click here means nothing. So the image on the left is no good. The image on the right, however, the links are easier to see as they're underlined. Those using screen readers would also know quickly that the links for core web vitals and page speed insights would take them to relevant pages on those topics. <clears throat> Do your images have appropriate alternative text? Alternative text or alt tags is what provides screen readers with information about the image or images you have on your site. For instance, if you load a photo and don't add an alt tag, the screen reader may identify the file name. In the case of the example, you would hear image 587492.png. PNG. If you're blind, you have no idea what this image is. When you add an alt tag, it should be descriptive enough so that those who are visually impaired can understand what the photo is about. In this instance, the alt tag is cute cat. Ideally, an alt tag should be fewer than 200 characters long, but enough to paint a picture. So we could be a bit more detailed in this alt tag and change it to read cute gray cat. Please note that you should never use an image as your text. I've seen in the past where people have loaded a pretty flyer they created as content for their page. This is a big no-no. Not only can screen readers not read the text in the image, but it's also bad for your SEO. So please take the time to build your page. It's better for everyone and don't forget those alt tags. Do your videos have closed caption? Closed caption on your videos are needed for people who have a hearing impairment. YouTube actually makes it easy to add closed captions. Just be sure you're also adding descriptive text beyond anything that's not in your script. For example, if there's a part of your video that has music playing in the background, add a description like upbeat music plays in the background so that your hearing impaired or deaf visitors don't assume the break in dialogue is just some awkward silence. Alternatively, if you're unable to add closed captions to your video, you can load transcripts to the page below your video. Closed captions and transcripts are also handy for visitors who are in a location where it's either too noisy to hear or they're not able to use their audio. Do your form fields have an accompanying label? The label tag not only enables keyboard shortcuts, allowing users to jump or tab from each form element to the next, but it also informs screen readers what the form field is about or requesting. I have seen many forms where the label is missing and the, the descriptive text is used as a replacement. While this might look nicer, screen readers are unable to read placeholder text and the default light gray design might be difficult to see as well. Can you resize the text on the page without breaking the layout? A user should be able to adjust the size of the text without causing the copy to either fall off the page or overlap other areas of the site. As you can see here in the example, when I enlarge the font size, the description in the box cuts off and you're not able to read it all. So you should do your best to avoid this by making sure the boxes are responsive so that when you adjust the size, the text that so that when the boxes are adjusted in size when the text is enlarged. Also make note that a standard font size on your site should not drop below 16 pixels. Any smaller and even people without vision impairments, impairments might have a hard time reading your site. Is there any fully justified text? If you're not using if you're not sure what justified text is, the best, it's the option that allows the text to be spaced in a fashion where the left and right sides of the text block are both have clean edges. So while this might look nice, large spaces between the words actually makes the copy hard to read. And it's especially, diff especially difficult for those who have dyslexia. 
Center aligned copy can also be difficult to read. So please use it sparingly and only for short pieces of content. Is the color contrast on your site sufficient? Readability not only depends on the clarity of your text, but it also depends on how easily it is seen on the page. It's important to make sure you have high enough color contrast using the contrast ratio of 4.5 to one. This is especially important for those who are experiencing color blindness. As you can see in the example, the left column of text is super hard to read. The blue on top of the gray and the white on top of the yellow are especially hard. This causes severe eye strain, which isn't good for anyone. The right side of the example is much better. All the text is clearly readable, no matter what the background color is. Now for a few resources. Here are a few you, a few you can use to audit your site to see if you're meeting some of these requirements. Wave and Axe are browser extensions that allow you to evaluate your web content for accessibility issues directly within your website. WebAIM.org has a color contrast checker that will let you know if your color combos are at the correct contrast ratio. And if you're using WordPress, a plugin called WP Accessibility is a good tool to help you set up keyboard focus, enforce underlined links, identify if any of your images are without alt tags, and you can add post titles to your read more links. There's also so much more it can do. Another tool you can use to help bridge the gap on your site is the UserWay widget. This is a free widget that provides user triggered enhancements that allow you to that allow a user to make your site more accessible. You can install this on your site while you're implementing the edits you need to make your site more ADA, ADA compliant. Now that we've done a simple audit of your site, if you answered no to any of these key pieces, it's time to implement accessibility into your website strategy. This will not only make things easier on your visitors who have disabilities, but it'll also help you with your SEO and your Google rankings. It may also save you from future lawsuits. In 2019, we had a record breaking year of just over 11,000 ADA Title III lawsuits that were filed in federal court. That's a lot of lawsuits. Thankfully, the trend has leveled off in 2020 as business owners took action to become more compliant. So whether you have an old website or a new one, or if you have someone managing your website or you're taking care of things on your own, the time to act on accessibility is now. Whether you're, we will be including these links on our website for you to review at the link shown on the screen. So if you have any questions or need any help in this area, please feel free to contact me at the email or you can visit us on our website at mapr.agency.